well, obviously tough. Uh, had a chance to battle in the first half, in the first half, the way that ended. And then the start of the second half, our opportunity, fourth and two, and we don't convert. And then it was just like slowly getting out of hand and we just didn't have enough offensively. I'll say a couple things. That quarterback, Bo Nix, is legit. That guy is a good player. I thought we had some stress points for him. He extended, got outside, made some big time throws. I think the fourth down thing, they converted a little bit early on. There's a couple fourth and shorts that extended drives. We had a couple opportunities to, to continue the game. And we did, because I felt like defensively, we wanted to make them earn it, put drives together, their explosive offense, not giving up the 50 yard hits. And we did a lot of that, but offensively we couldn't couldn't get anything going into the second half and, and whatnot. So I, I appreciate some of the effort. We had a couple new starters out there and, and going and battling and doing some stuff. Um, but that's a good football team. That's going to be a good football game next weekend. Going back to back against these two opponents. Uh, that'll be a fascinating game to, game to watch. We missed the two starters on the old line. Running game struggled. The nails, yeah. nails just seemed like they were stronger this year than last year. Yeah, and again, you play us, you're going to try to stop the run, and they, they did a good job of it. I did, Jacob Stram went in there and battled pretty good. I thought he played solid most of the night. Um, we could not get that going, got one dimensional, and couldn't score enough. Jonathan, there's there's a lot of reports out there that you're in line for the Michigan State job. Have you interviewed for that job, or do you plan to interview for that job? Yeah, having uh, in no decisions have been made. Uh, I asked this team to take a approach we're locked in on four months, and that was a little bit the start of conversation with so much uncertainty with Pac-2, where it's taking place. I've taken the same approach. So decisions, time, and all of that have been locked in for the last four months, and, and we'll go from there. Coach, have, have, you, have you addressed their future with the team? Did you talk about your future? We've, we've talked about outside noise throughout the year. Talked to the team just a couple of days ago about a bunch of rumors and talk and all this. Asked to stay locked in until through this game. I, I appreciate this group because I think they've done it for four months. Coach, what have the conversations been like with Scott Barnes? Obviously, I know with his future in this attorney. How have those conversations been going? Scott is, and this administration have done a lot of work trying to navigate unprecedented times. And so we've met weekly and talked about that approach, not just for football, the athletic department, scheduling, all of that. And so that's been a weekly conversation. When you guys, when you guys go through a decision like this, how much do you listen to your heart? How much do you listen to your head? Or how much do you listen to both? Because obviously this changes not only your future, but the potential future of our program. Yeah, I think there's a process that you reevaluate every year. We kind of spoke to it. It's not just myself, every position coach, every player now with the transfer portal. I think you go through a season, dive into it, and then you reevaluate. Anthony seemed really emotional after the game. Just talking about the pressure of all of the outside stuff and the realignment that the team's going to carry. How did you feel like the team carried that? And did you feel like it maybe got to be a little bit much? I mean, I, I do think this team was locked in, mentally tough. It's a good team that's stuck together. Look, we had some tough losses tonight. Yeah, this was a little bit of a runaway, but everything else in this season, these guys have been bought in and going. I appreciate this group. Coach, you said no decisions have been made. When do you expect the decision to Don't know. To be determined. Don't know. Coach, you've obviously faced off against two of the best teams in the back to back weeks. So you have an opinion potentially which one might have been better? Well, I, that'll be interesting. So, yeah, we played both those teams and uh, the quarterback play. The elements were a little bit different last week, but I'll tell you, the way the Ducks played right now, they are going to be tough to beat. Jonathan, talk a little bit about that sequence at the end of the first half. You know, you guys have a chance to go into the halftime break down seven. Yep, Bo Nix. I mean, get, they get to about midfield. There's about 22 seconds. We want the ball to come out kind of quick. We pressure them. We don't contain it very well. He's a really good athlete. And you get that much time, he throws the ball back across the field to a big time receiver. That, that changed the huge momentum at halftime. Coach, also the last two wins you guys have had against Oregon State, more than 200 yards were shown on the ground tonight, not even 100. Now, what happened? Yeah, I mean, give them some credit, taking it away. I and mean, again, we were able to stay on the field, convert some critical third or fourth downs to continue to being able to stay on the field, gain some rushing yards. Coach, I'm just wondering too, obviously, with everything that's gone on, conference realignment, Pac 12, going to a Pac 2. What's it been like for you as a coach, coaching through this season and just dealing with all those outside? Yeah, uh, coaching this year's been fun. I appreciate this group. Yeah, there's some adversity, distraction going on, but uh, I've enjoyed every minute this year so far. And, uh, those guys in the locker room. Uh, I really appreciated senior week uh, last week recognizing those guys because again, uh, I got a deep appreciation for them. John, what would Scott really said statement earlier this week was saying that the priority was to get you to sign a contract. Have you guys had a discussion about that? Or is that saying right 
Again, I'm going to keep those between me and Scott. Like I've said, we've met weekly throughout this entire season with so many things going on. I felt well informed. The bowl game that's coming up, uh, you don't know the date yet, but do you have an inkling of which bowl is really much? Yeah, uh, that's, you know, I didn't think about it much, but yeah, playing in a bowl game, this group, that's a reward. That's I think there's still beauty about that in college football. The teams that have a solid season get to extend it and enjoy a week so. Coach, you can see that you can see that Gruel was emotional after the game. And if you're telling your team all the season to kind of just focus on that week ahead, week ahead. What was your message now? That this is your message to what was your message to them after? Yeah, I talked about it in the locker room. They just did a better job executing than we did. Give them some credit; they're a good team. I appreciated their effort. How did you feel like you handled this first game? I can't hear you one more time. How did you feel like you handled the game? I thought he battled in there, man. I thought. Uh, you know, we, early on, we had a couple of throws that even been a little tighter in there, but then he got into a nice rhythm, made some creases. We asked him to carry the ball a few times. I think later in the game, as it went on, his protection didn't hold up very well for him. Was there a conversation with Aiden about his play time today? We talked to him earlier this week. We got, got to the point feeling like just the weather was changing. Like that was not being fair to either guy to have Aiden warm up, sit there for potentially a half hour, go in. No, he's coming back out. DJ coming out. So we decided this game we're going to let DJ roll. Thanks, guys. Thanks.